Do you remember your last in-flight meal? Now imagine it's 1919 and you're aboard the first flight to serve food. Picture yourself on a Handley Page flight embarking on a journey from London to Paris. The year 1919 marks the centennial of airline food. The world of air travel was at its infancy, yet the concept of in-flight dining was taking its first steps. The inaugural in-flight meal was as simple as it was pioneering. Passengers were treated to a unique airborne dining experience featuring fried chicken, sandwiches and fruit salads. Yes, you heard it right, fried chicken in the clouds. It might seem modest compared to today's standards, but it was an innovative idea for its time. Ah, that added a dash of comfort and luxury to the adventure of flying. This marked the beginning of a culinary journey that would ascend to impressive heights. If you're enjoying this video, don't to like, subscribe and comment. Let us know if there are any other topics you'd like us to cover. Fast forward to the 1930s, when the first airline kitchen made its appearance. This was a time when technology was rapidly evolving and the aviation industry was no exception. United Airlines took the lead, introducing the world to the first ever in-flight kitchen in 1936. It was a groundbreaking move that changed the face of air travel. Suddenly, the possibilities for in-flight meals expanded. No longer constrained to simple sandwiches and salads, airlines could now offer a more diverse menu to their passengers. The novelty of dining in the sky took on a whole new meaning. From hot soups to sizzling steaks, the sky became a place where culinary delights were served thousands of feet above ground. The introduction of kitchens on aircraft opened up a world of possibilities for in-flight dining. It set the stage for the evolution of airline meals that we see today. The sky was no longer the limit for in-flight dining. In the 1940s, in-flight meals took a chilly turn. The era marked the advent of frozen airline meals, a development that significantly changed the way food was served in the skies. Prior to this, airlines grappled with the logistical challenges of providing fresh meals for all passengers on board. It was a complex task, requiring careful planning and coordination. Enter frozen meals. With the ability to be prepared ahead of time and stored until needed, these meals presented an efficient solution to in-flight catering. They allowed airlines to serve a wider variety of dishes and cater to more passengers, all while maintaining the necessary food safety standards. This shift didn't just transform the food itself, but also the whole dining experience at 30,000 feet. Passengers could now look forward to a meal, even on long-haul flights. It was a significant step in the evolution of in-flight dining. Frozen meals revolutionized the way passengers dined in the air. The 1950s ushered in a golden age of airline food. This was an era characterized by an emphasis on comfort and luxury in the skies. One name stands out during this period, Pan Am. The world-renowned airline company was already known for its innovations, but it was their silver service that truly revolutionized in-flight dining. Pan Am went beyond the usual pre-packaged meals and introduced dishes that were increasingly prepared on board. Imagine the delight of passengers as they were served gourmet meals right at their seats, 30,000 feet up in the air. Menus featured an array of delectable options from finely cooked meats to beautifully presented desserts. This wasn't just about eating, it was about an experience. It was about making the journey as enjoyable as the destination. And so, as passengers dined on exquisite meals, served with elegance and sophistication, dining in the sky had become part of the travel experience. The 1960s saw the Concorde redefine in-flight dining. As the iconic supersonic jetliner took to the skies in 1969, it did not just cut travel times in half, it also elevated the culinary experience at 60,000 feet above the ground. British Airways, one of the two airlines operating the Concorde, made a name for itself with an outstanding menu that was worlds apart from the norm. The airline's approach to in-flight dining was akin to dining in a Michelin-starred restaurant with a menu that read more like a gourmet feast than a list of airplane food. Passengers on the Concorde could indulge in a cornucopia of delicacies, including champagne to toast their supersonic journey, caviar as a decadent appetizer, truffles for a touch of earthy luxury, foie gras for rich indulgence, and lobster as a sumptuous main course. In-flight dining had ascended to new heights of luxury. 
Inspired by Concorde's opulence, other airlines began to up their game. Union de Transport's Arians, for example, took a leaf out of Concorde's book, recalibrating their menus to offer more luxurious in-flight dining experiences. This was a time of experimentation and innovation as airlines tried to distinguish themselves, not just through their flight services, but also through their food. However, it wasn't all champagne and caviar. The reality was that airline food had a mixed reputation. While some airlines were serving gourmet meals, others were still lagging behind, offering food that was often expensive, but of varying quality. The inconsistency across the industry led to a paradox of sorts. Passengers were experiencing the luxury of flying, yet the food they were served didn't always match this experience. In-flight dining was evolving, but there was still room for improvement. Beyond meals, let's not forget the importance of snacks. These bite-sized treats are often the unsung heroes of our in-flight dining experience. Airlines have come to realize this, and now they've got entire product teams dedicated solely to the selection of snacks. This isn't a simple task of picking up packets off a supermarket shelf. No, it's a meticulous process that considers a variety of factors. Taste is, of course, paramount, but transportability is also key. Can it withstand the rigors of air travel? Is it resilient to changes in air pressure and temperature? Demand is another factor. What do passengers want to nibble on mid-flight? Then there's nutrition. Airlines are increasingly mindful of providing healthier snack options. And let's not forget branding. The snacks must align with the airline's identity and reputation. So remember, the next time you're crunching on those crisps or cracking open those nuts at 30,000 feet, even the humble snack was getting a makeover. In recent decades, Airlines have realized that food is fundamental to the in-flight experience. A journey through the skies is no longer just about reaching a destination. It's also about the culinary adventure that unfolds thousands of feet above the ground. As the years passed, the realization dawned that the quality of in-flight food had a direct impact on passenger satisfaction. It's fascinating to observe how airlines began investing more into their in-flight meals. Food wasn't just an add-on anymore, it was a crucial part of the journey. From sourcing high-quality ingredients to hiring renowned chefs to design menus, airlines left no stone unturned in their quest to offer a memorable dining experience in the clouds. Even in economy class, the expectation of satisfying meals became prevalent. Airlines understood that every passenger, regardless of their seat, deserved good food. The art of in-flight dining evolved with quality becoming a non-negotiable aspect. Quality had become a key ingredient in the in-flight dining experience. Today's travelers are demanding more from their in-flight meals. Gone are the days when a simple sandwich or a reheated meal would do. Instead, the modern traveler is seeking a gourmet dining experience at 30,000 feet, a testament to the ever-evolving nature of in-flight catering. The in-flight meal has come a long way from its humble beginnings in 1919. From the introduction of kitchens on aircraft in the 1930s to the advent of frozen meals in the 1940s and the golden age of airline food in the 1950s, each era brought with it new advancements and improvements. The iconic Concorde, which entered service in 1969, set a new standard for in-flight dining, serving delicacies like champagne, caviar, truffles, foie gras and lobster. This opulence inspired other airlines to recalibrate their menus although the quality of airline food remained a topic of debate. In recent decades, however, airlines have recognized the importance of food in the in-flight experience. Investment in quality food has increased significantly and passengers now expect satisfying meals even in economy class. But in today's world, travelers want more than just a satisfying meal. They want a culinary experience. From boxed lunches to fine dining, airlines are now offering a range of dining options to cater to the modern traveler's demand. And it's not just about the food. Airlines are constantly innovating to improve the overall dining experience. From the presentation of the food, to the selection of beverages, to the service provided by the cabin crew, every aspect is meticulously planned and executed. Indeed, the evolution of in-flight catering is a reflection of the changing demands and expectations of travelers. As we continue to explore new frontiers in travel, we can expect to see even more exciting advancements in in-flight dining. So next time you're on a plane, appreciate the culinary journey that has transformed airline food over the past century.